Hello, I'm Jeff Darrington, the Senior Technical Marketing Manager here at Greylog. And in this video, I'm going to introduce you to some of the new features in Greylog version 4.3. First, what I'll do is bring up the release. And you'll notice online we have quite a comprehensive list of features that have been added to this release. What I'll do just briefly is go through those in this video. The next feature we'll go through in three groups. First will be the core features in Greylog. Then the search and reports features, followed by the GYP as a functional component. First, to look at the new core features, we now support Open Search as a version 4.3 in Greylog. Open Search will be a part of the roadmap moving forward, and there'll be some special instructions on this, so please stay tuned. We will continue to support Elasticsearch up to version 7.10.2. We now have pre flight version checks built in when upgrading and installing to ensure stability of your Greylog instances. And we've added a new column and pipeline rules for visual indication of your rules applied to your pipelines. To help with the task of parsing complex JSON files, we now have a new function in pipeline rules for parsing JSON arrays called flatten JSON, which takes a nested JSON string and returns a flattened JSON tree and a parse depth function for shallow parsing a deeply nested JSON document. We've included updated stop processing or drop message capability which helps improve performance and drop messages earlier in a stage rather than later. And we've added a configuration option to allow inputs to be stopped manually and stay that way up amongst a restart or a stop start of Greylog services. The new search features, what we've done is added a new search query analyzer for validation. And this will also lead us to a new search query field name suggestion, allowing you to pull hints into your information and a multi-line search query search bar. So now you can see your entire long queries across your search bar. Let's look really quickly into these features. So what we'll do is bring up this instance of Greylog and in Greylog, you'll see here, if I type HTTP method, which is one of the fields I know I have in my data below. If I wanted to add a field, you'll see in this information, it will pop up right directly on the screen. I can select it. These are values within a field. If you wanted to add an additional search, for example, an or delete, if you happen to not enter this properly, it will give you an indicator with an underline under it, and you'll see the error. It will tell you the error, and you can correct it. So here, I can make a correction, and you'll see that the execution works. If you want to insert a manual line, you can. You hit Shift and hit Enter, and enter an additional line for your search. I've got a long search here that I saved here really quickly. And you'll see in this search how it will wrap around and continue down the screen. The next feature that we're going to look at is our reports and alerts options. Now we have the time zone setting in your reports, which allow you to configure across your organization for each of your reports by region. We've added the ability to edit your widgets within the report area when you are viewing the data. And this allows seamless configuration between your widget config and what you want to see in your report. Reports now have an option to be generated and sent hourly. These changes are made much easier for compliance and other requirements for reports. And we've changed the alerts notifications now for email to include configurable time zone settings as well. So let's have a quick look at that. Inside, we'll see that in a report, when you edit the report now, when you configure it, you will now have an option for a new time zone. We have also added the size of letter for the report and portrait or landscape inside the report. And you'll see down below where I've added this particular report, I've got these widgets. If I wanted to edit a widget, I can click this edit actual widget option. And what it will do is pull up this widget directly and you can go in the widget, make modifications, save the changes, and then go back into your report and save the changes into your report. If you want to go further into your report, you can set up the email scheduling hourly as it drops down here. And you've got the minute of the hour that you can define when you want it to go out. And that's what we have for our reports. Our notifications now, as you'll see, we've got two notifications here for email. This one here particularly is for Germany. So if I edit that, you will see that we do have a time zone setting now in the notification. To move to the next set of features, we do have we have now the GeoIP component inside of Greylog has been updated. And you'll see the geo geolocation can be enabled or disabled by on the configuration screen. And we have the option now to go in and enforce the Greylog schema. So 
but you can actually start parsing based on specific fields that are in the schema. We've also added a seamless application of the GIP databases that would include the enrichment for GIP for MaxMind and or for IP info. So let's have a quick look at that. Inside of Greylog, when you go to System and Configurations, you go to the very bottom, you'll see the geolocation processor. You click Update, you'll see now a new menu for enabling disabling the processor as well as enforcing the default Greylog schema and the database type that you want to use, whether it's IPN4 or MaxMine, and then the location of where those databases are stored within Greylog. And that covers off our 4.3 features introduced in Greylog. Thanks for watching and happy logging with Greylog.